Hey everyone. So did you know that you can use ML.NET inside the bot framework to make predictions? Well, in this video, I'm going to show how you can do exactly that. And to start things off, um, in Visual Studio here, I already have created a bot framework project here, and it's just from that echo bot template. And the first thing I'm going to do is I want to create a couple of folders here. First, I'm going to create a folder that holds my ML.NET model that I'm going to be using. And this is just going to be the housing model here. Until I to copy over. So in order to use this, I need a couple of model files for it. You've probably seen these in several other videos. Put them in a folder called models and I'll create a couple of classes here. The first one is going to be the housing data class for the input schema. There we go. And these are going to error right now because we haven't done any NuGet packages yet. And then I'll create another class, which is going to be the housing prediction class. And this is going to hold the output schema from our model. And this is going to have the predicted house value that I'll use for the prediction. And then last, I'll create another folder. This is going to have my dialogues in here. And dialogues in the bot framework are essentially just a way to manage the conversation from the user. And so in our case, I want to ask the user a series of questions that's going to fill out the in input information in here so I can use to call the prediction model and get a prediction from it. All right, so now let's look at some NuGet packages here and install some. So the first thing we need is ML.NET itself using version 1.4 here. All right, and then we're going to need the Microsoft.extensions.ml NuGet package, version 1.4. And the reason we need this is that because the bot framework is essentially a MVC project, we need the extensions in order to read in our model file into the application. And then last, we need the Microsoft Bot Builder Dialogs package. This is what we're going to use to build our dialog here. Right. And then I'll load in the namespaces for these things. So the first thing I'm going to do is go to my startup file here. So let's get this set up where we can actually read in our model file here into our application. So we do here in our configure services method, we do services that add prediction engine pool. And this comes in from that extensions.ml package that we installed. And then here we put in the input schema, housing data, and then housing prediction for the output schema. And then we do from file. We can also do from a URI if you want to get it from blob storage or uh, somewhere else. So we do from file and it's in our ML model folder, housing model.zip. And I'll, I'll say watch for changes false for now. All right, so next let's create our dialogue here. Add a new class, call it housing prediction dialogue. And in here I need to inherit from component dialogue from that bot builder dialogues NuGet package that we installed. And I'm gonna create a class level field here, be private, read only. That's gonna be that prediction engine pool. It's gonna use the housing data and the housing prediction as the input and output schemas. And I'm gonna call it prediction engine pool. Now I'm going to create a constructor in here. And the first thing I'm going to take in is the user state what we get from the Microsoft Bot framework. And the next thing I'm going to get is the prediction engine pool, housing data, and housing prediction called prediction engine pool. And then I need to send in the constructor to the base class here, this component dialog. And that's just the name of our dialog. 
So I can use the name of operator and give the name of our class here. So inside of our constructor here, I'm going to set the prediction engine pool equal to what we get in the constructor. And we get this from our startup here that we need to input here. And we need to set a couple of things in here. First of all, let's add a singleton for I storage. It's going to be memory storage. And this is going to be for uh, basically conversation state. And speaking of which, let's add another singleton called com conversation state. And then we'll add another one. And that's called user state. And all three of these we get from the bot framework itself. We don't have to do anything with that. But last, we need to add another service, another singleton. And it's going to be the housing prediction dialog. There we go. So now our bot has the information that it needs. Go back to the dialog. And adding those singletons is how we know to get the user state and the prediction engine pool within our constructor. It does its own dependency injection from there. Next, I want to define the steps of my dialog. And the kind of dialog I'm going to create is a, a waterfall dialog. So each step that we define is going to be happen one after another in kind of a waterfall fashion. It's going to be an array of waterfall steps. And the first one I want to add is a latitude step async. And these are methods that we're going to add. And let's go ahead and add that one. So it's going to be a private static. It's going to be async. The task of dialog turn result. And it's latitude step async. It's going to take in the waterfall step context. And then a cancellation token. All right, and all this is going to do is going to return an awaited method here from the step context. We're going to return a prompt. We're going to tell it to prompt a message here. First thing is give it a dialog ID and we just give it the name of a number prompt because we're going to ask for a number here and if it's going to be a float type. And then our second parameter is going to be the prompt options. So we do new prompt options. And then here we just tell the prompt it's going to be a message factory, just create a text from it. And the text we want it to send is what is the latitude. So that's our first step in the waterfall step items here. I'm going to finish the constructor, adding a few things. I'm going to call the add dialog method that we get for free. And I'm going to just let the dialog know about a few things so it can run properly. First, I'm going to say there's a waterfall dialog and give it a, the name waterfall dialog as the ID here. And I'm going to tell it the steps here so the, the dialog knows of these steps that we give it. I'm going to add another dialog and it's going to be a, a number prompt so it knows to use the dialog down here from our prompts. And we're going to use float number prompts. And again, just give the name of number prompt float. And then I'm going to do an, another prompt. It's going to be a choice prompt. And I'm going to use this choice prompt for our, our last question in our dialog here. So we give the user a choice of the ocean proximity items because it's a categorical column in our data set. And so we just give our user some choices so they don't have to know exactly what we need them to put in. And then lastly, I'll set the initial dialog ID to just the name of the waterfall dialog. And now I can continue adding steps here. And just for the sake of time, I'll go ahead and add these and then I'll come back and finish our dialog here. All right, so I have uh, added the rest of these steps here. And for the remaining steps, I added the step contact values, just kind of this dictionary to hold the result of the previous step context. So the longitude step is going to take in the result from this prompt. It's going to have it in this result property, and I'm just going to store it in the step context values. And I do that with pretty much all the rest of these steps here. But then we get down to the ocean proximity. And remember, that's 
the categorical column that we have here. And this is where we're going to use that choice prompt. To do that is return await step context. And we do another prompt. This time we do name of choice prompt. And then we do new prompt options. That stays the same. Then our prompt, we still give it a message factory text to tell the user what we want them to, to send in. So we do what is the ocean proximity. But we have another property here called choices. And here we do choice factory. Two choices. We can just give it a new list of strings. First one will be near bay. Then we do less than one hour to the ocean. Then we do inland. Then near ocean. And the last one is island. So we have a list of choices for them to choose from. And these choices will pop up on the dialog for them to click on as a choice. And then our last step here is to finish dialog async. This is going to be the last step that it runs. And in this step, this is where I'm going to make my prediction here. And so I can create a new housing data object. And then I can just fill in my items that we got from our step values. Uh, most of them are going to be floats. So I'm going to parse these items. Uh, so we do step values and we do longitude but we need to do it as a string for it to parse correctly. So we need, let's do that to all these other ones here. And then for the ocean proximity, we have to do something a little bit different. So we can do step values, ocean proximity. That's coming in as an object here. And that object is a found choice. And what we need to do from that, that's still an object and we need to get the value from that in order to get the string value from it. So now we have our object that we want to predict on. So now we can use that prediction engine pool called predict on it and just give it the housing data. And then to send the prediction to the user for our, our bot, do step context that context. And then from there, we need to send activity async. Now do a string here, house, value prediction is prediction that predicted house value and let's format this so it looks like currency so i do a two string and i give it a format of c for the currency there now i need to tell the bot that the dialog has ended ended this flow so i do return await step context dot end dialog async now send in the step context that values and I'll send a cancellation token in there as well. And that's it for our dialog. And you see that it encapsulates all that we want to do from asking our user all the questions and then it handles when the questions have ended. So let's go back to the bot. We have to do a couple things here. All right, so first create a couple of class fields here. We're just going to do a dialog, call it dialog. Do a couple more. And this is going to be the bot state. This is going to be the conversation state. Do another bot state. This is going to be the user state. And then we'll let's create a constructor. Because we need to pass in some stuff from dependency injection. First, we'll do the, do the conversation state. And then the user state. And I need to pass in the dialog. Do a type of T dialog. And we need to specify this class. We need to constrain it where T inherits from dialog. And then for that T to work, we need to set it on our class name. There we go. We can create as many dialogs as we want, but it needs to inherit from the dialog class. And since we set the predictions bot of T, go back to our startup, we've got an error here. So we need to pass in T and here, which is going to be the housing prediction dialog. So back in our bot here, in our constructor, we will set dialog equal dialog and all these other items here. On this on message activity async, 
put some new stuff in here. We will await that dialog and we tell it to run async. And you pass in the turn context that we get on this method signature. And we do conversation state, create property of dialog state. And then give it and pass in the name of dialog state to it. And then send the cancellation token. So this on message activity async is just going to run that dialog that we set up before. Uh, member added, we don't need this, but we do need to add a public override of on turn async. And I'll call the base of this method first. Let's make sure your async is in there. So set the conversation state to save changes async. And just pass in the turn context. Uh, tell it not to force the saving and then pass in the cancellation token. And then the user state to do the same thing. And then the last override method that we need is the on end of conversation activity. And that just calls the base method there. And that just tells the bot to end. All right, so we have that. Let's run this and see how this works. All right, so it's running okay. Let's launch the emulator. Here we go, and I'll copy this endpoint. Here we go, we don't need a app ID or password. And let's kick off the bot here. Uh, it's like we've got an error somewhere. Let's let's see. Okay, so we need to set this property to the dialog parameter that we set here. And let's spell this correctly. All right, let's run this again. All right, and I'll reconnect to the bot and kick it off again. And I'm just gonna put some pretty random stuff for these values. So let's see, 120. 172, uh, let's see, 35, 1602 for total number of rooms. And remember, this data is from a general area in itself, depending on the longitude and latitude. That's why these numbers seem kind of big for total rooms and all that. To the bedrooms, we do 77, 275 for households and 2169 for median income. And here, ocean proximity, here's that choice prompt that we added. So we get the number of choices and I guess I'll choose the island. House prediction is uh, almost 7 million. So, and remember this is California data set. So that, that might be right. But it shows that we can use ML.net within our bot framework here. And it was pretty easy to do. Uh, the main thing was just setting up the dialogue making sure that runs correctly. So I'll end things here. Um, hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see y'all next time. Thanks.